On this episode of Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I are drinking some Half Acre beer, and we talk about big hugs, we talk about sketchbooks, imperial stout release, we talk about the revolution release that's happening this week with Double Barrel, Right Way to Heaven, and Mine Shaft Gap. And we get into some metropolitan news, as well as some uh, Two Brothers news. All that more on this episode. Here we are, hitting up events, drinking our way through Chicago beer, and trying not to miss a thing. Yeah, because, you know, got a cork pop out, boom, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, all you have to do is add some fruit, stir it up, and ride that milkshake wave. Whenever I see him, I gotta take a photo with the most decorated brewer in Chicago, Jonathan Cutler. It'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Sometimes you want a small beer, but really, you want a big beer. You gotta take in all those big aromatic hops. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Waiting in line for a bottle release? You should have never been a fad. The black IPA is delicious. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. We took a turkey day off. <laughs> and we're back, man. Off, yeah. You know, we're back. Feels good to be back. I know. You know? I kind of missed, uh, my Thanksgiving was different. It usually involves lots of beers being shared with family members and, I don't know, tasting all these breweries that I don't get to from the suburbs yeah. and bringing stuff in from the city that they don't get. Yeah. I miss that. Um, we usually go out for Turkey Day. Uh, we stayed in and cooked, so it kind of led to an argument. Okay. And then, you know, we cooked it all again the next day. But so it sure led to plenty of drinking, too. <laughs> and also that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of talking, so that was cool. Nice. Uh, well, since this is the official Half Acre sponsored podcast <laughs> here, we're drinking more Half Acre beer. It never stops, man. Some, some things stay the same. I just, uh, I had to go get Big Hugs. We'll talk about Big Hugs here in a minute. Yeah. And I was like, well, we need something easy drinking because we got a lot of stouts to drink about and talk about. I would have loved, a, you know, a 4% lager, but classic IPA. I tell you, man, and that's that's no lie. It's half acre in place. That's all it says. Mm-hmm. And there's like a bunch of, uh, you know, foraged uh, vegetables on the, on the can. Right. Uh, <laughs> that's about it. And I believe it's... <laughs> Six percent, I think it was like six point seven percent. The website said so, yeah. it's not too crazy, but it has that like cherry caramel color that I'm used to. Yellow hay color every beer, and it's like oh, roasted malts. <laughs> yeah, right. It's you know nice caramel malts, and it drinks uh, like a classic. Uh, like West Coast or Midwest, really. Yeah, it drinks like a Midwest IPA because it's you know? not too bitter. It's like just the right amount of bitterness that leaves you dry and sort yeah. of uh, lip smacking. Yeah, and it's you know double IPAs can be kind of sweet. This kind of stays away from that too. Yeah. It's um it's all there. This, this is this is good. Yeah. Yeah. This would be a beer that would be boring. What six years ago, and now it's like oh thank you Half Acre. We need a <laughs> reminder of what just you know beer beer flavored beer is. Right. We just need a reminder of that. It's probably why people gravitate to Dovetail so much, right? That's true. We just want beer-flavored beer. Flavor beer. Mm-hmm. That's a brewery I have not picked up or gone to at all this year. I think that's an experience I miss a lot on site. Oh, yeah. We had the cans, and they had just started canning, right? Mm-hmm. So that full experience wasn't in the can yet, I don't think. Right. But going there and just being there is 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 really is really a treat, hanging out yeah, there. Yeah, there's something about the place and having the beers there and having uh, – what the little beer, uh, not the the Kolsch, right? Yeah, the Kolsch. I was like, yeah, I still don't understand that. They come in a tray and all these little. I think they're they're called uh, Willie Belcher glasses. <laughs> yeah, just can't do that at home. Like I can't. Oh man, just get you some Willie. Get you twelve well, Willie Belchers. That, yeah, that's not going over well at the house. Like, I got all these beers. They're just to, these glasses are just for me when I want to have this one beer. Tw- yeah, twelve <laughs> servings of it. Just get a bigger cup. <laughs> and I. Haven't read up, but I want to know why it comes in that way. Like you know, the pills, the Kolsch. Is it, I think it's the Kolsch. Yeah, the Kolsch. I don't. I want to know why they, how it, how it started. Where you, where you got to have a whole tray of them. I don't understand. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably easier to charge people more. <laughs> <laughs> I 
if we give them tiny glasses, they'll drink more. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I picked this up. We're gonna sip on this as we uh, talk about some stouts and some news. Uh, but oh, you know what I saw about Half Acre? Um, it's Half Acre, Jace. I was watching No Reservations on Hulu and uh, Anthony Bourdain's show. Yeah. And one of his final his final season, he was at uh, El Bulli. It's like a river. It's like an oceanfront thing in Spain. It's like the number one restaurant in the world. Yeah, um, I've been there. <laughs> are in you, Barcelona. Are yeah. you really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so we, but we went there, I think, because he recommended it. Or it was I don't know if you played or not. Rack, you could never tell with brass play. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's yeah. you know, it's like uh, you know, fine dining, like 15 courses, all oh, super small, all that kind of stuff. That one, but. Oh, but anyway, um, Half Acre made a beer for them. Oh, really? Okay. Um, back in like 2011. Okay, maybe it wasn't that one. Though. I didn't see uh, Half Acre there. Well, we were drinking wine. Yeah, it was uh, Sanguis. So I'm like, you know. So we're talking 2011, 2012. Half, maker, half Acre's making a beer for the number one restaurant in the world. Okay. So I'm like, this is bizarre. But of course, Half Acre's making a beer for the number one restaurant That's in crazy. the world. That's crazy. I don't know. There's a lot of good breweries over there in Barcelona. Uh, furthest I've been is the, the Dublin trip. So. Yeah. yeah. That's so. pretty. That's pretty. Yeah, half acre. I don't know. Get around. Oh. And then they, uh, and they're putting out as much beer as often as Revolution, pretty much. Uh, especially like special one-off releases. Uh, this past week was Big Hugs release. That was quick. Uh, no. Three, three versions. Normal, and then do you remember what the other uh, two well, were? One was barrel aged. Barrel aged. So. And then probably the other one was barrel aged too. So this is a coffee stout. Uh, Nick's going to look it up. Yeah. This is, a, I believe, the second year it's in cans. I tell you, man, it's. Uh, I think it's one of the oldest running stouts. I'm looking up Big Hugs. I need to be looking at Half Acre. <laughs> it's one of the oldest running coffee stouts in the city, period. Mm-hmm. And one of the first ones to use dark matter coffee uh, in their beer, uh, just because they were friends or friendly, and so this was the first time kind of dark matter was seen uh, imperial coffee stout with vanilla oh so vanilla barrel and normal yeah uh vanilla and barrel sold out very quickly so i only ended up picking a four pack up normal yeah and i think uh i think the barrel was two packs like you know two cans okay yeah. that's like, i wish i could have had a either a four pack of one each variant and two that's all I need. I just need one can. Yeah. That would have been perfect. Like you need a mix. I mean, I need this. I need. We'll get to the sketchbook one, but it had two, two, and two. Yeah. That's great. I'm surprised it's not an option, because I mean, they like. They're obviously a crew that understands that we like new, because mm-hmm. there's always something different coming out. Yeah. Yeah, but. Uh, so I I didn't bother getting up early and getting this order in the day of the release i was like "Ah, big hugs they make enough of it i'll just get there when i get there yeah that's true um it's somebody that's gonna hit distro i know some og benthic Mm -hmm. hit distro um i think a two pack of that'll set you back 30 bucks at uh benny's okay yeah so i mean it is it is delicious Mm -hmm. if you're gonna blow 30 bucks on two beers yeah you'd be okay doing that and although the our big cat since uh uh, what's his name? Left. Uh, uh, Phineas. Phineas left. It's not really the cat. Is still kind of there, and this year's is looks better than last year's. Last year's was kind of the design. I, I wasn't a big fan of, but this year's kind of fun. It's kind of a trippy, like an acid trip kind of vibe with the cat. And I think last year the cat didn't make an appearance at all. That's right. That's why I didn't like it. Yeah. No cat. I mean, that's part of it, right? Big hugs. I think big hugs is a cat. Yeah, right. Isn't when the we hugs, talk, is the hugs a cat? <laughs> is I, that thought a thing? Was, I thought it was hugs a cat. <laughs> you know, staring in the corner, and it looks this creepy furry doll here that kind of looks like a gigantic yeah cat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I've never seen that before. <laughs> but, but yeah, big hugs was a cat. He was talk. They were talking about we. It was Gabriel. We interviewed Gabriel some years ago, and Gabriel's talking about you know, hey, what's the biggest kind of you know fairiest thing we can do. You know, like, oh, we'll just have this big menacing cat, but he's just so big and lovable that he doesn't understand how terrorizing he is. And it's, right. it's, it's our version of the Imperial Stout, you know. So, yeah, we got this. I feel like the Half Acre as a crew, a lot of their designs have been going in this, like, uh, 70s acid, just weird vibe. Even the can of uh, In Place looks like a, a 70s print. 
Like, so it's like a weird who, like their design team is going, is eating mushrooms basically every day. <laughs> Even the boat, we're drinking out of half acre Bodum uh, Master Taster glasses. And the and Bodum font and is sort same, of that like that exact grooviness, same thing. Uh, which cool vibe. Like I dig it, dig what they're doing. So uh, we're going to drink a big hugs on another video. So look for that on the YouTube channel. Yeah. I'm excited to try this year. I think I still have probably a, one from a couple of years ago hanging around hugs works hugs is uh hugs isn't trying to like move the needle as far as like in coffee intensity yeah hugs is trying to give you like an easy not, well easy is, the, is maybe ain't the right word but they're kind of give you a a 10 percent stout that is like accentuates the the, the coffee flavors accentuate the natural flavors of a, of a regular stout okay yeah yeah. Uh, so that's one of the stouts that was released this past week, uh, or past couple weeks. Another one was this uh, sketchbook uh, variety pack I picked up. Now, is this a stout? Uh, yeah, so this is an imperial stout. They're turbulence. Uh, it's a barrel-aged imperial stout. Oh, right on. And so there are... Yeah, these are all different, man. There's three versions here. Hey, they, hey. they offered... A mix pack, and that was I was like, yeah, I'm going for that. I think it was like fifty bucks for this mix pack, and I got us some little taster glasses too. Yeah, uh, these so are, these are cute. Is this the beetle? The beetle. The design. Yeah. Uh, right so we on. got normal, we got ancho peppy pepper <laughs> and cocoa nibs, and then uh, toasted coconut. Uh, so this beer, I remember it came out. Remember the mushroom cap version? That's weird. And I, I went up there and had it. Uh, cause, uh, Sean Curry was like, Hey, we got, uh, whatever this mushroom cap one was. Yeah. Shout out to Sean Curry. I remember the mushroom cap one had the whole place smelling like syrup or something they were saying. Yeah. Um, oh, and that was this stout? That was this stout with those mushrooms. Okay. Uh, what, what were those shrooms called? There's a certain kind of shrooms. Smell like he syrup. will send me a Facebook message <laughs> that it was, uh, this, yeah. uh, I don't remember, but yeah, they smelled like. They taste. They gave it a maple syrup kind of vibe. Yeah. Which, you don't think s shrooms at all when you think maple syrup. No. No. Yeah. Uh, so I was kind of wanted to see that one in cans, but I'm sure uh, that's expensive beer <laughs> to make. Uh, so again, we're gonna drink one of these uh, on another video. And how about how about uh, Sketchbook coming through with the Tall Boy barrel aged toasted <laughs> coconut stout? That sounds like my kind of party, but I, know, I think that's the one Nick's eye in here. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we'll probably do that one, you know, go coconut on another video. Uh, yeah, I haven't tried any of them yet. I've been saving this for us to dive into. So. Good call. Good call. We can always count on Brad to find some things off the path that we otherwise would not be trying. Mm -hmm. So uh, The two we did, we're going to talk about revolution here, but the other two we missed was... Uh, Cruz Blancas, that oh, series came out. The uh, Luchador. And I haven't made it over there again. I bet they still have some. Last year, I think you could stroll in there and grab mm -hmm. some. Um, um, and then the other one was, oh, well, we had uh, Black Friday happen. Yeah, so you, if you, if you so desired, could spend, um, you know, thirty dollars on a bottle of barrel aged beer with Goose Island. You know. And you did, right? Um, I think I got a anniversary and a... Yeah, and a, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I say this with my head down, pointing, looking at the table. Yeah, I got an anniversary and I got a birthday. Nice. Okay. Actually, I sent I sent Josh Riley some money at Kanga Key. Okay. Because he's like, hey, I'm here. Do you want one? I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. That's one of the other ones that we missed uh, coming out is the uh, Bourbonnais uh, oh, Brickstones uh, there. Dark Secret. Dark Secret series. It's all out. happening too fast, Brad. That's yeah. the problem. Which that means also... Uh, those other people uh, in Tinley Park, uh, Hailstorm, Hailstorm, their stouts probably came out too. Um, I feel like you're talking about the Vlads. Stuff, yeah, the right? Vlads. I feel like that's that rolls. I feel like that's a, that thing rolls all year. Okay, so oh look at this. Um, uh, speaking of Brickstone, uh, they have a Weller Bourbon Dark Secret as well as a uh, Vanilla Espresso Dark Secret. Man, Weller barrels must have been prominent. Right. Easy to get this year. Yeah, they are making the rounds. Uh, we were talking, what was it, Fresh Fest? And, uh, you know, like over the, over the summer. And there's a guy in Houston who's trying to start a brewery, Austin maybe. 
And um, he was talking about how he got some Blantons and some Whirly 12 barrels. Huh. And his brewery's not even open yet, and he's got Blantons. <laughs> he's got Whirly 12 okay. barrels. Yeah, you talk about uh, Brickstone with the Weller. Shit. Um, well, Goose, they're one of their their feet. They co-branded with Old Forster and right. Weller. And then this Revolution lineup that's happening this week, uh, what, the Double Barrel has Weller, right? Double Barrels and Weller. Um, on that on that interview that they had with uh, with Marty and Jim Seaback, uh, that stars in Weller Bills this year. Weller Special Reserve Bills. Yeah. Man, what's the... It's the Weller year. It's the barrel of choice. <laughs> it's the barrel of choice in 2020, man. Yeah. It's bizarre. Um, you know, weeded bourbon, and apparently brewers like the way it, you know. I think Weller and uh, I'd say Four Roses. Okay. Because um, I had a Brooklyn Brooklyn brewery, Black, uh, what is it, Black Ops? It's their barrel yeah. aced out. That was in Four Roses barrels. And then Half Acres um, Benthic is 50%. Four Roses, 50% Willet. Okay. So, yeah, between Willet and Four Roses. You know. And then we had the Half Acre Barrel one come out, too, that uh, you got some cans of. To my Benthic. Not, right? Haymar- not Half Acre, Haymarket. Oh, Haymarket. Oh, shit, I got to bring the Haymarket cans. Right. So, man, it was like. It's Cold Dark Night. That's the Doppelbach. And uh, the, the Barley Wine. It's like crazy release that. I'm like wondering how we cap up with this. <laughs> it's just too Outside of, us, right? of like, we would go to all these things and have all of these. Uh, yeah. And now it's like, oh, I don't know. That one came out. I can't get to it. Shit. Yeah. I had to bring the half acre one, man. I mean, the uh, Haymarket one. Yeah. I, dude, I dig their barley wine. Okay. Their barley yeah. wine is, is strong. Yeah. Uh, so then, this Revolution one coming out this week. Tell me, what do we got? Yeah, man. Uh, mine Shaft Gap. Sounds like it's straight jacket in cognac barrels. Okay. Right? In cognac barrels for a year. Um, and then, of course, um, what is slowly becoming my favorite in the whole lineup is fucking Rye Way to Heaven. Okay. Which is a rye wine in rye barrels. Okay. This one looks, the can looks a little different. It's like white. I feel like it might have been like yellow or yeah. gold last yeah. time. Whatever that gold is on the, on the inside. Was the flipped color. They, they yeah. flipped the colors. They need to do that for Cafe Deets because some of these spots have Cafe from last year, and they also have Cafe from this year. And honestly, if you didn't know any better, you wouldn't know which one was the Yeah, 20. they need to change up just something on Slightly, there. Not just, much. Yeah. Don't do, the, uh, don't do the two brothers thing. Just flip the shit completely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. And then, uh, oh, and then Double Barrel VSOD. So I want to say last year they had a VSOD, extended aging, two years, uh, dust tar. And then this year is the double barrel release where for that second year of aging, they transfer barrels and put it into a fresh barrel. Okay. So we're talking 17%. We're talking an, a, a whole different, introducing a whole new flavor to the beer okay. for the second year of aging. And these are, yeah, so it's aged two years where something like uh, Firestone Walker's double barrel ale, that's like just in barrels for like a short amount of time. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank on how that that beer works because I like that beer and it is called Double Barrel but it's not like an overly boozy thing it's, yeah I think so it's, they're it's not the, in barrels like, for a short amount of time or it is a blend of two barrels I forget I think that's just like in a barrel then move to another barrel all within like a six to nine months period like that's what I feel like if I remember correctly it's been so long since I've had that beer now one of my favorites and I, I dig that beer I haven't, I haven't had a Firestone Walker beer in a long time. Same. Uh, but this is like each year is in their separate barrel. So that's like a bigger deal. You're going to get a lot more flavor, a lot more of that booze, oakiness, whatever's in the barrel. There. Yeah. And then um, I think uh, – and then the 17% is something <laughs> you don't see too often. Right. Outside of the brewery, <laughs> right, the brewery and uh, – Family Root Brewery out on the West Coast in Orange County. Oh, the brewery, yeah. All their stuff is big format, 18%. Yeah. But, yeah, 70% is a lot. Mm-hmm. These other ones are 12 to 15. So, okay. so we're going to drink a double barrel. God damn. A, right a, to heaven is 15%? Mm-hmm. God we're, damn. We're going to drink a double barrel on a YouTube video because I think we did a Ryeway uh, last time. Yeah. So that's up there. We don't need to do that again. Uh, this mind shift... Gap, I'm like excited to try because that one is like different. 
or it's was there a barley wine last year? Yeah, they're they're probably coming with barley wines every year. What was it called last year? I think um, they used the fancy Armagnac barrels last year. I want to say, right? Hmm. Um, the names the names escaping me. Okay. But I don't remember. we have we have all the cans. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at our. We need to, we need to drink them. <laughs> look at our like uh, archive. <laughs> uh, All right, bro. We need to drink these cans. I know, I know. I don't know. We need uh, we need friends. We need help. Uh, yeah. We'll get to, we'll get to them at some point. We're gonna have two years of of revolution party here at the office at the studio. Uh, so yeah, these come out Friday. Uh, hopefully, this episode's up before that. And Double Barrel was already sold out. It sold out very quickly. Yeah. And the other two were the other two were still available as of recording this on Tuesday. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to give these a go. I still haven't tried Maple Deeth yet. These are coming out very fast. Even though it's like once a month, the months are very short. <laughs> They're not fucking around. And then I think as a, as the year gets colder, you know, I'm gonna appreciate it more that you know you got something to look forward to with three releases every, with what feels like every month. Mm-hmm. What was that other one, Brad? I'm just I'm just gonna keep digging here, man. It's driving me nuts, man. Uh, yeah, we'll have to check it out. But yeah, cognac barrel. I don't know. That's not. It sounds fun. Yeah, because <clears throat> I think uh, I think we talked about it before too. I think cognac is uh. You know, the cognac region in France, but then cognac starts as wine, where uh, where bourbon starts with, it's mostly corn with mm-hmm. either rye or wheat. Okay. So, that's what I've I've never, I've never gone down the cognac path. Like, I don't, I don't um, know enough about it. You know. It, I know people dig it. You know, Hennessy's popular in a lot of rap songs. That's usually a four-year Hennessy. It's really young and bright and a little messy, honestly. And, like, that shit always gives me, like, a headache or a backache. Okay. You know, some of the older cats I used to I run with, they would talk about, like, Remy Martin is the one. Oh, you right. I've heard Remy. of that. Yeah. <laughs> and then if there's no Remy, then you would order a Hennessy. But, uh, yeah, it's it's very bright and fragrant because it's wine <laughs> you know it starts as wine so it's very bright and fragrant so it, it kind of after a while man i just kind of stayed away from cognac hmm. yeah just uh yeah i'd love to like talk to someone that either knows a lot about it or like what what makes someone go cognac over uh, a bourbon or a scotch even like why yeah. Uh, like I also, I find if I'm gonna go down that like bourbon path, I'd rather have like the the counter be maybe sake, like, and so you get like two different, completely different worlds. But yeah. that's me. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fair. The the only cognac that I would probably drink now is the uh, the Hennessy XO. Okay. Which is like uh, that's where the one that kind of tastes the most like bourbon. Where the, the the fruits so are. You want the bourbon because <laughs> I want the bourbon flavors. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of like the scotches. <laughs> I want those like less peaty scotches and the more bourbon whiskey scotches. But yeah. that's me. Yeah. I like that. I like that bourbon flavor better. Yeah, um, it does impart a different type of sweetness because you know corn and and bourbon imparts a sweetness. I've had mm-hmm. some some bourbons that were full of you know dark dark ripe apple and vanilla and caramel, right? And that's all coming okay. from corn in the barrel. But then I think these uh, these cognacs are a different type of sweetness, though. You know, that mm. that plum and that, you know, that wine sweetness is a little, it's different. It's just right. not better or worse. It's just a different profile. Hmm. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll get into it at some point. And, yeah, pick up these four packs. Like, get them while you can. Dude, I, I never thought I'd be into... Like well, I've always been in the barley wines, but the rye wine thing is something that a people weren't really making a whole lot of, mm-hmm. and then they're doing them so well that it's just it's kind of exciting to see how you know these malt forward beers have all these different characteristics, you know. So that's cool. Nice. All right, we gotta. Get, I'm excited. We gotta get through these. We gotta get through this episode <laughs> so we can get drinking some uh, barrel aged beers. Uh, uh, we got two bits of news. Yeah. Before we get out of here. One is this Metropolitan story that is seems like a mess. 
Apparently they are they've been overpaying on their uh, on their lease at their gorgeous uh, riverfront brewery right and tap room. Um, it's part of a it's part of a complex. So that building is it, it's what do you how would you say it? it? It shares it's a it's like an it's like an office park that that and uh, they're a tenant in this office park. Right. right? That has uh, Metropolis Coffee, Metropolitan, a distillery just opened there. I believe there's a hotel or like a uh, mini hotel that was going to. I don't know what status that is at right now. Um, and I thought there was a food place opening, but that hasn't happened yet either. Man, that sounds great because it's just like right down the street. Mm-hmm. But the distillery had just opened okay. in the last month or two, so it's there now. Uh, and Metropolitan apparently signed this lease that accounted for, what, 9,000 extra square feet that they believe might have been like a floor that got torn down during the reconstruction. Yeah. And this was their this was kind of their bad for not checking the lease that they signed, but they were in the middle of construction. I don't know why they were I don't know what happens in like all these uh, business office leases, but like yeah. why were you already building out before you signed the lease? But Yeah, they're so they're paying for more space than they thought they they thought they agreed to right yeah and they didn't notice it for what two years yeah. until afterwards as they're like trying to be like why is the space so expensive so What's the response happening? to that was to try to talk it out and when that didn't work they just said well we're not going to pay because we only want to pay for you know the what is it eight thousand versus the ten thousand square feet for example i know that's off, yeah but. i forget what it is um why the landlord wasn't like fuck you then and now he's like two years later. This is rough. It, it's, some accounts say that you know <laughs> that Metro's Metro is on the hook for like eight hundred grand for this place. Right. There was something on Reddit that said they had they had this money that they've been paying like an escrow, so they do have this money. So they're not like short this money. They do have it if they need to pay it. I don't. But that was someone on Reddit, so I don't know if. Yeah, that's, that's where I saw the original story. Before it ran in any on block club or anything else, I saw it on Reddit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then the landlord is trying to be like, uh, you're serving food, which they're not because they don't have a food license. Or you tried to obtain a food license, which isn't true. They never did. Uh, they were had people in the shared space, which it's COVID. You have to line up. If, I don't know if you've gone over there at all not since. since. Not since March. So you have to wait outside, like if you're waiting for your table or your like time is like 6 o'clock and it's 5.45, you need to wait until it's your time and then you get seated. And so there's sort of like a mini line that gets formed. But that's a shared space, so they're not supposed to be able to do that. But, hey, it's COVID. you got to – that's what you have to do, like – I guess you could have everyone line up outside. This landlord sounds like a jerk, right? Yeah. Like for stuff like that, and then I and think and then noise complaint. Like who's complaining about noise? No one else is in the. <laughs> no one else is in the space. No one lives space. right there. Like if you're being so loud that the noise of people carry down the river, like that's crazy. It's not like they have rock bands. <laughs> you know, and they the I think the knock on having, you know, if you work downtown. You could take a uh, a taxi cab, a, a water taxi up to Metro. You can go all the way. I mean, but the river's not, uh, the river's too shallow. Yeah. So you can't. Right. Okay. But I mean, so what's this guy talking about? He's got, he's the landlord of a store, of a place that's got a dock, but you can't even get boats coming from downtown. So why are you so upset? Why are you right. so angry? And, what, you're going to kick this brewery out? Nobody is coming into your, do you know the, what's happening with the commercial lease too? Like, it seems like he's... He's in trouble. I think it was the top floor that they, the top floor that got torn down mm-hmm. to make room for some tanks, but the landlord counted that as occupiable space still, even though there's no actual floor. Right. right? I think that's the argument that right. the landlord's yeah. making. Yeah. So that's that's bizarre. I like Metro. I hope they I hope they I hope they come out on the other end of this. Yeah, you know, uh, Tracy is a fighter. She will figure this out. Like, I don't, the Metro doesn't go anywhere. I think they get this sorted out. Yeah. The space is beautiful. They spend a lot of time there. They are a staple. If, if they came down to it and they were like, hey, we need help, I think people would, like, 
flock to them and be like, here, here's a thousand, here's a thousand dollars, here's two thousand, like whatever, get your shit together, let's get this, keep going. Yeah, and this is the closest, like you talked about this distillery and the coffee, the coffee folks. Actually, I think the coffee program with Metro, I think it's those folks. Yeah. Right. So all these things are kind of moving in. You know, there's a space in Denver called the Source, where it's just kind of like this. Uh, it's it's a craft food court essentially, right? And it's got some of the same elements, and Cricket Stave is in there, mm-hmm. right? I mean, and this is the closest thing we've got in Chicago to something like that, to something cool, where it's all artisan, local producers, all doing different things, all doing fun stuff in the same little office. Right. Park. It's kind of like the plant. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, it's kind of like it's like the what west south side kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So, I mean, for this landlord to get, you know, stick his nose in it and try, and try to ruin it when we're trying to, they're trying to do something great there is, you know, is irresponsible, you know. I, I bet he's short on money. I bet other things were supposed to come in there and have uh, backed off or paused, and he's yeah. like, well, I have to pay the taxes on this, and I got no one coming in. Where am I going to get this money? Oh, these guys are... Yeah. And he's stressed out, so now he's taking pain pills, and then that escalated to heroin. And what? No. <laughs> I don't know this guy. I don't know this guy. But, I mean, come on. He should be helping them make that work. Yeah. That's ridiculous. But, you know, but, hey. I feel like it could get sorted out, and then we don't hear anything about it. I think so. Goose Island, the original Goose, uh, what is it, uh, Clybourne? They, it was always dire straits when the lease is up. Well, oh, no, this is the end of the road. We can't figure out an agreement with the uh, landlord. That yeah, was it's always almost the... closed a dozen times. <laughs> I would have swore, I would have put money on it that it would have closed during COVID times for yeah. real, and it hasn't yet. Yeah, keep yet. on trucking. Yeah, so, <laughs> though, so it'll get figured. Might out. double down on my bet on that. <laughs> I went there and got the Ozzy burger there. It was pretty good. Oh, you went there. You get like an Ozzy helmet. You get the helmet. You get the White Sox helmet. Get the Ozzy Ricky card. You get some fried plantains and you get like a double burger or something. Okay. I'm like, man, this is this. Is cool. Oh, and you get the beer. You get the Sox beer. Oh, all right. I'm like, shit, for like 20 bucks. I'm like, hey. <laughs> That's a lot for $20. Dude, <laughs> it was legit, man. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, and then the last story is this uh, two brothers <laughs> rebranding. That looks like they decided to go back to their original clip art it's, option. It's very much um, Microsoft, what is it, Paint? Remember that Microsoft yeah. Paint? Yeah. It looks like it was, it, this can't be real, man. It's like some, yeah, like someone found the original branding yeah. from, I believe, like 98 when they started. Yeah. And it was like, this one. What, it, what about this? What if we use this? It would be like a cool throwback thing, right? It's like, it's like, it's almost 8 bit. Yeah. It's, or something, right? I don't get it, man. But yeah, there's an image out there of all their brands and they all look they all they all look wobbly. Yeah. That's one of their beers. <laughs> <laughs> it look like it just looks like something's gone wrong with this rebrand. Right. It has their little like spiral on it. The colors are bad. I don't I don't I but I can't I can't picture what the current branding it's is. Like a, yeah. And maybe that's part of the issue. I tell you, cr- two crews I like, uh, two brothers, and I like Wild Onion. But, you know, their branding has always left something to be desired, both of those crews. Right. Yeah. So. They're just kind of there. <sighs> they're doing their thing. And they're not making beers that you want to be seen drinking. Like, I, I I'll pour that in a glass. <laughs> What was the beer they had? The twenty three. They had the uh, oh the, yeah, they had the Jordan, Jordan beer. beer. I'm yeah. like, hey, you guys can't do that. You guys, you know, Mike's gonna come for you. You can't do. That. You gotta change that. Yeah, yeah that's that, yeah, that's wild. I hope they figure that out because what that is, right, what we saw. Yeah, I feel like what's the source of that? Is that the website? Um, I don't know. Uh, somebody like Chicago Beer or somebody on Twitter found this picture, and I feel like they're branding currently wasn't bad their beers are in costco and you know uh, they're all over the place but and then you know even goose they uh they they rebooted the matilda design a few times Mm -hmm. and i thought that was something you didn't really have to mess with at all i thought it looked great but you know weird color scheme like you know big what is it like old english lettering they just changed it completely so i mean you know people there's people still trying to find themselves man no, that shit is real. That shit's on their website, Brad. Okay. 
You know, let me see it again. Hold on. Let me go back. That's, I haven't been. Two Brothers was the last place I had a beer and food at before COVID. It was in the. It was as things were happening, and I was concerned when I was there. So, <laughs> but that was one of the last places I had uh, gone to. That's I think right. I may have got a pinball, or I posted a picture on our Instagram. It is rough out here, Brad. Oh yeah, there they are. Look at that shit, man. Yeah. That is. That's actually. Those are. Those are the new brands. That's that's bad. That's what that looked like. I think we had this one. Yeah. The pinball. Oh, that's a bad. Yeah. The logger. I feel like that's kind of the same. That one, yeah, the 20 plus looks like. A, they just need to hire an actual designer rather than getting one of their kids to constantly do it. So the label we saw wasn't <laughs> as bad. What do you call this? It's like a pinwheel. Each, each, uh, each bottle is a different color pinwheel, and then there's a stamp with the name on it on each on the front of each one. Right, isn't that like their spiral or I call their spiral? But oh, that's right, it's a spin on this little spiral. Right. So each the cans or the bottles now look like beer from like the early two thousands. Like this is your default beer. We have the yellow one, we have the green one, and we have the blue one. Yeah, it's like um. Like an sync of Britney Spears video in yeah. like late 1999. This feels like that, which might be the, what they're going for. It's not gonna. It's that that ends badly now. Party on, two brothers, man. Whatever you guys do, man. Party on, yeah. Yeah. Oof, ouch. All right. Oh, well, should uh, we should we end it on that, or we got anything else? One more bit of news: the good folks at uh, Phase Three plan a double size. Uh, their brewery out in Lake Zurich, they uh, they sent some plans to the board. So they want to expand by almost 7,000 square feet, and they currently have 7,000 square feet. So okay. the plan is that they uh, they want to double. Um, they're partying hard out there. And, um, Damn. you know, some of their uh, barrel-aged uh, releases that are membership only are going for $600 on secondary. What? It's the, I think it's, the, A, the beers are good, but I think it's the membership thing, too. Like, you can't get this beer unless you're in this club, bro. Mm. And that's driving the secondary price through the fucking roof. Okay. So, but, yeah, so good for them, man. Good they, for them. They're, I don't have, I don't, I almost never have their beers. But Because, you know, a lot of times you got to go there. You can get the IPAs, but, you know, the cool shit, you kind of got to go there to get it. Right. So I only have a Two Brothers beer when I go there <laughs> now, so I guess it's kind of the same thing. But uh, <laughs> I got to go there. This is turning into the... Uh, Blue jeans with the T-shirt tucked in the blue jeans podcast right here. Is that the is that the two brothers crowd? That's the two brothers. That's the two brothers Chicago Beer Society crowd right there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they all got the shirt tucked in the jeans with the belt. With the and, they're, nice. and they're drinking two brothers. <laughs> yep. See that. Uh, all right, yeah. we got we got some barrel aged beer to drink. On that note, let's get out of here. Uh, Nick, where can people get in touch? We're not here. Man, I'm on Twitter at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter at BRAD, Chicago Beer Pass, Chicago Beer Pass, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, website, Chicago Beer Pass. Get off my lawn. <laughs> uh, and check out the YouTube channel because we're going to be posting all those uh, barrel aged videos, stout videos. So let's do it. Take care. Cheers.